when you're jamming over a song like this, there are a lot of different variations that can take place. Um, if you want to play outside and do the unusual things that we did in the actual solo, certainly possible. The other thing you can do here is we can actually use several different scale shapes. We can play our, our basically our E Dorian, our E minor pentatonic. Um, because we're playing our E dominant 7 chord, we can also play what I consider the E dominant pentatonic, which is just the E minor pentatonic except with a natural third instead of a uh, minor third or flat third. <laughs> Do some cool. Do some nice sounding stuff with that, and that works great over a seventh chord. It's almost got a little bit of a mixolydian feel because it's got the natural third and the flat seven, just like our mixolydian mode does. Okay, so we can do a couple variations with scales. Um, a couple of licks you can try over this. One is is kind of an outside thing that that happens. It's pretty interesting when you can take any lick that has a minor third in it, like a pentatonic type lick, for example. If I do that and start on the 13th fret, right? All it actually is is a, basically a minor 7th arpeggio. And then I can move that either up or down by a minor third, right? So if we count it one, two, three frets, that would go to here. Do the same thing, and then do it down another minor third. This is really going off of like a diminished scale principle where we can move our licks up or down a minor third. We can do that with a lot of pentatonic stuff because of the minor third that is inherent in it. So we can actually do this lick. which makes for a really cool lick to step down off of. So we're starting outside. If we're playing an E minor pentatonic, we're right here. So we're going up a half step. That's doing our chromatic up a half step, or our outside up a half step thing. And then we do this lick. Down a minor third. Down another minor third. And the cool thing is that puts us right in basically what would be considered our fourth position of E minor pentatonic. So I'm basically I'm ending up playing an E minor seventh arpeggio, which is a really cool lick. Another thing we can do is actually a lick that um, looks a lot harder than it actually is, and that's pl doing this pull off from, from seventh fret to open on the first string and then hitting the second string on the eighth fret. So I'm, then after I do the initial pull-off, then I'm hitting the first string open, do a hammer on pull-off. And then I could do a, a double stop there, step my double stop up to 12 and 10, 17 to 15. And then I can get clear up here. So that's kind of a neat thing. Gives it a lot of angst when you get up there. It, you know, doesn't have an outside sound, but has a very aggressive sound. So when you get real aggressive like that, it makes it really, you know, more powerful sounding. And that was once again what we can do sometimes with the outside stuff. We can go a little bit outside, make it interesting. You listen to, you know, cats like Scott Henderson and Robin Ford and, and Jimmy Herring, you know, that play this outside stuff and it seems like, wow, wh you know, how can I do that? Sometimes it's very difficult to make that sound good. But you just have to start with small licks, with some of the licks that we've done here, and start experimenting, trying to get a little bit out and then go back. Once again, get weird and then go home.